we like to call it the supernatural hour. And now, our hosts. Hey, welcome to the Supernatural Hour podcast. I am your host, Raven. This is Emmett. And I'm Chad. And we are glad to be here today. So this is, um, you know what, let's do business first. Okay. The business is brought to you by Castle Photo Art. Um, Go to Castle for your photo needs. You can access his website through our website at advancedparanormal.com. Right on the main page at the bottom is a link for many of our friends of Advanced Paranormal. Um, Go check out the people that support us. Uh, Just a little plug for Castle. Uh, He's my brother, so therefore one of my first Facebook friends. And he, um, you know, posts little snippets of shoots that he's done. And he's done um, a lot recently with graduations and weddings because it's getting warm and people like those spring weddings with the flowers. And I have to tell you, he is my brother. I used to beat him up when he was little. But um, not anymore. He'd kick my butt now. But um, he really does a good job. And I'm not just saying that to be nice. His photos look really good. One thing about Castle, he either does something 200% or he doesn't do it at all. So if you have him do your pictures, you're going to have a a good job done. So for the business, we don't have any business today. We do not. So we'll go on. We'll be looking for some new... um, Venues. Some new venues that we'll be getting up soon and... I actually made a few phone calls today, so we've got some stuff in the works. But we don't have anything planned at this point. Right. Well, and I realize that today is June 1st. Yeah. Yep. yep. We, it's not June 1st when we're recording this. When you hear it, it will be June 1st. So as far as you guys are concerned, it's June 1st. Um, but we are already booking. For, we have got people calling us already booking for spooky season. I had to, I had to print... A calendar. For October? For October to start keeping track of stuff. I also had to put BYU football games on it because we may have had to not go to some of our season games because we accidentally scheduled stuff on BYU game nights. So you'll have... Oh, we can't can't have that. No, so you'll have Happy Raven because she won't miss any football games this year. Okay, cool. So unless unless the Notre Dame games are crazy expensive, then we might have to miss that one. (laughs) We had a residential in Bountiful, and we actually just had this one last night. And Emmett, you did come on this. I'm going to let you start this. What did you think? This was amazing. Um, it was a, a smaller, older home, uh, very nice, small home. In fact, I, I wouldn't mind retiring to a place just like that. Um, but even just just walking in, you could you could feel something dark and oppressive, and. Um, which was uh, which was different than the decor and the feel of the home from the way it was upkept and everything. Oh no! Oh yeah. yeah, it was very cheerful and yeah. Um, but the but just, the feel was dark and oppressive. Yeah, this the this, feel. Yeah, yeah. It was really weird because your eyes told you this is a bright, clean, tidy, happy home, but the feels did not match it. Yeah, it was completely counterintuitive, and there's there's even puppies playing, and uh, you know, and literally, and, and, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but just you know, the the, the residents had uh, been experiencing some things, and and uh, uh, it it was funny because it it was one of these places where the gear just wasn't doing much good, and uh, it was cool because uh, Chad, you actually got to investigate. Because you were you were the only one that the spirits would communicate with through okay. through any of the gear. Yep, and Emma, I'm going to interrupt you right here. I'm so sorry, but if you've listened to our podcast ever, <laughs> you know that spirits do not talk to Chad. We actually have to send him out of the room to get spirits to talk to us. Sometimes. So this is an amazing, wondrous thing. Oftentimes in public investigations, I will stay back and man the. Um, the the home base area and tell people when to rotate and you know the the drinks and and chips well and you're, and yeah security too basically yep. and run run security well and yep. like on residentials usually I mean sometimes the homeowners will follow us around and listen and ask questions but sometimes they'll sit in the front room with Chad while Chad answers questions and he'll tell them what we're doing and 
you know, we'll hear him in there, you know, kind of just giving them a narrative of what's going on. But we went into this bathroom because that's where I felt the heaviest energy. And I set up my Ghost Meter Pro. And my Ghost Meter Pro always lights up when we go somewhere to the point. Always, that, always. Yeah. You know, and, that's and, like your that's like your favorite gadget. Right. It's like this is my go to. I know that no matter what else works or doesn't work, this will work and it would not light up. And I knew it had and I mean I knew the batteries were working. And here's the weird thing. So it finally lit up and I asked it a question and it turned immediately off. And um it would not light up and I thought, I know there is something in the house. I could feel it sitting in the car before I even walked in. Well, and we both felt it in there on, on the cold walkthrough. Yeah. So, I mean, we knew it was there. And interestingly, I took the SLS through this whole place. And the only place I saw anything at all was for a brief second in that bathroom. And as soon as I swung the camera in there, it knew I could see it. And it darted back out again. Right. And that was the only time I caught anything on the SLS or anything any gear at all that was it right so i usually wait for my dowsing rods until the very end right because we like to try to get pictures and try to get mm -hmm. evidence through you know scientific methods before we jump to the dowsing rods i had to go get those almost first to figure out why the spirit wouldn't talk to me turns out it didn't like women which is a shocker because it was a type three none of them do but it wouldn't even talk to me um and, he, and it said it, it it literally said the only person it would talk to was chad and i'm like i've never heard that before and i mean no disrespect that's just how it works you're intimidating to spirits and they don't like to chat with you and um so emmett and i left chad in the bathroom and you know we went and wandered out in the backyard and back in a shed you know just to see what other fields we got uh chad do you want to tell us what the the type three told you yeah we we got um i got because every time Raven came by, it stopped. <laughs> I literally, I put my foot in the door one time because, you know, he's asking questions and I can see the light going. I literally put one foot to step in because I wanted to see the dial because it's, the, the Ghost Meter Pro, it's easier to look at the dial than the lights because the lights don't always correspond. Soon as I stuck my foot in the bathroom, it would shut off. Yeah, it was Me too. Yeah, I was shooting video and I... I tried to shoot video uh, uh, of, of Chad interacting, and as soon as I'd stick that camera in the door, it, st it stopped. Nothing. So while they were out doing other investigations in other parts of the yard and, and the house, um, it wasn't real ch talkative with me, but it came on and it answered a number of questions. Um, I was, you know, I, I asked, and again, yes and no questions, and I'm not very good with this because I don't do it very frequently. Um, I thought you asked good questions, though. Well, oh, you you kicked butt last night. So I I, I identified, you know, I you know, are you a a demonic entity? Are you a spirit here? You know, and and we were able to do that, and I was able to ascertain. And I asked if there was, you know, if it had a minion, as if it did it have a a, a type two, the kind of you know a, a, the kind of ghost that it's manipulating. And, and it said no, but then I determined that there was actually, I, I said, do you have, is there another type three, another demonic that, that is your beta, that you're the alpha and he's the beta? And he said, yeah. And that rang true to what had been going on that the homeowners had told us as far as some of the things that they were going on. And we were able to, I was able to do that. And I, you know, I did have some pretty good. Um, oh, it turned out to be exactly right. Yeah, I had some pretty good interaction with them. At one point in time, uh, I asked a question. I don't remember what it was, but the response came back um, as a no. And I said, that's a lie, isn't it? And it came back, yes. Because <laughs> I just knew. I mean, I don't get the feels very often, but I just, it was like, no, that was that was a lie. Um, th there are times when I can be a little bit sensitive, but I'm You I'm told generally... me what that question was. I'm trying to remember what it was. But it was funny because it's like no, that it was it was it was trying to pretend it was the little girl, wasn't it? That may have been it. I think. Yeah, so. I think you said this isn't really. You're not really the little girl, and just, that's a lie. Yeah, I think it was. I think yeah. it was something like that. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. So, anyway, for me, it was an interesting investigation because I probably did more of the actual. Uh, I investigate. I go around, take pictures, I do things, but more of the actual interaction in this investigation where there are usually much more qualified people to do it than I am or people that they will respond to better than me. 
So oftentimes it's uh, Raven or Emmett or other members of the team that do a lot of those kinds of interrogations, I guess I'll call it, yeah. um, um, with, the, with the Ghost Meter Pro and with other, with other devices. Right. So that was kind of an interesting um, investigation for me. Yeah. So, Emmett, back to you. Well, it's um, the, it was really cool too because you know we did have such a chance just to, just to reach out and feel a place, and you know you and I both found that um, portal in the bathroom, and um, the mirror situation was crazy. You know, you, the two in the hallway. That was. You remember we we were stand. You could stand in between it. Just describe that because we both did it and tried it, and it was crazy. We both felt it. So. We've talked about this before on this podcast, but when mirrors face each other, it can just create, you know, a vortex, an energy, a portal, you know, people call it. Like a bubble things. almost or yeah. a field. And, yeah. I, and I can feel those. You know, that's one of the things I look for when I go into a home is, are there any mirrors facing each other that could be causing some problem or feeding a problem? And this house was not very large. And we turned the corner and I saw these two mirrors facing each other. And I was like, okay, there's a problem right there. And I walked towards it. And I've always been able to feel kind of the energy that they make. But this one was different. I walked in it and I could feel it. It's almost, you know how like you like if you were to walk into a rubber band and it just kind of follows you and stretches with you? That's what it did. And I, I walked through it and I could just kind of feel like I had was stretching it. You're and bringing the, it with you. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like, like walking through jello or something. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, that is really weird. And so I turned around and I walked through it again and it did the exact same thing, but the opposite direction. So I was like, Emma, Emma, come here, come and, here. And this was within <laughs> literally two feet of the bathroom where the portal was. Yeah. So I'm yeah. Like, just in the hallway, just right outside yeah. of the bathroom. And so I didn't even tell him what I felt. I'm like, Emma, Emma, come here. What do you feel? And you described exactly the same thing. It was, you could, yeah, there was, it was amazing. That's exactly what it was. And do you know what I felt when I was there? What? What? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and the, these homeowners, they were fantastic. I mean, we've, in every investigation I've done, I've never met jerks. I mean, everyone's been very, very nice. And, and if you get to the point where you're calling Ghostbusters because of what's going on in your home, you're willing to do anything to get rid of whatever it is that's, you know, that's troubling you, right? Um, and we were the second people that he called he first had his neighbor come in right mm -hmm. who yeah. was supposed to be a ghost hunter and well and the problem with the neighbor is he had his equipment stolen uh shortly before <laughs> that so he didn't really have a whole lot of equipment to work with right um but these guys they were just fantastic they, i mean they had already done their research yeah i asked him how they found out about us and they said on the internet they looked up you know like utah paranormal investigators and they found i don't know if they found advanced paranormal or wisps but they found us and contacted Raven. Um, and I could tell by the, some of the things he was saying and, you know, I, you know, that he read our website. He didn't just find it and go, oh, contact, send the information. He read Yeah, because he website. asked you about your brother. Yeah, he's like, now you and your brother started this, right? And I was like, yeah, you read the website. <laughs> 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 um, but, I mean, they took notes. You know, they... they um, we're very vested in what they were doing. You know, and what so, we were doing. so the reason I brought this up was because these mirrors are facing each other, and one of them looked kind of antique to me. I mean, it looked... Kind of the oval one? The oval one. You know, it looked like it might be sentimental. The other one looked just mm -hmm. like a standard mirror you could buy anywhere. Um, and so I said, hey, I said, these two mirrors facing each other, that creates a portal. And I said, I know, you know, the idea is you stand in front of them, because they were both kind of big mirrors. And that way you can, you know, see behind you and make sure you don't have toilet paper sticking out of your waistband or something. I get it. Um, but I said, it just isn't good. I said, one of these mirrors has got to go. I'm like, I don't care which one. One of them's got to go. He took it down right then and there. Mm. Yep, he and, did. And, you know, put it in the other room. It wasn't, oh, you know, we'll do it later. I mean, it, down it went. And it went in the other room. Um, they were... They were really good about that. Um, I mean, if and that that field was it didn't disappear completely, but it like it like went from a ten to like a two when yeah. that other mirror was gone. Yeah, there was still some residual energy. If we had told them to burn their house down and build it new, they probably would have. <laughs> well, I, but we don't tell people that. I know we don't. We don't. But I'm just saying this, they were. This very... place was just. It was so. I mean, I. I'm I'm glad you know that that we were there. Because the gear just wasn't working. Even no. if his even if his neighbor friend had had his gear, I, I don't think he would have gotten anything. 
No, um, I didn't get any. I, I didn't take any pictures because I didn't take my other phone with me. Um, oh, you know, it completely disabled the video camera in the garage. Yeah, the only thing I could use was the dowsing rods. Yeah, and I didn't see anything on the thermal camera. Mm -mm. I mean, I, I looked and I did, you know, I mean, I saw that there were hot and cold. And things that, where they were expected, but I didn't see anything paranormal. Right. Yeah. So we went right. out into the garage where the where the gentleman had had a lot of activity, and Emmett and I went out there with um, the thermal camera, and we saw some motion, kind of up in the in the top right corner from from our stance. Um, There's kind of like a ceiling joists up there, kind of. Up yeah. in that area, yeah. But nothing, nothing really definitive. I mean, nothing that I would post as evidence because I don't know. There were light leaks around the edge of the doors. It's hard to yeah. say, really. But that, I yeah. mean, as far as the thermal camera, that's really the only thing that might even have been a thing. But nothing that was like, oh wow, look at this. It was. Yeah. It was not an equipment sort of night, which is very unusual. Yep. So we. Um, train of thought gone 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 so we did you know our investigation um we, we wandered around in the backyard um emmett you determined they had had a dog that had passed away um, just that's recently right. very, very recently, recently enough it, it was still like they were still agonizing over this dog yes it over was this loss yeah. very very recent and it's a puppy that they'd had for about a year at that time mm -hmm. and was a very good dog um you know they just loved it to pieces and to the point that they wondered if its death came about because of paranormal activity. Um, and it was. It was determined later that it was one of these demonic entities that had pushed the dog out into the road. Because they said that, they said that the way it ran out into the road was very unusual um, activity for the dog. I mean, just the way the dog... It was like he was being forced out? Yeah. I mean, just the way he ran out and where he was was very unusual for him to be there and to act that way. And um, it was... So it was engineered just to cause stress yep. with, with, with the clients. Yep. So we wandered around in the backyard. Besides finding um, the spirit of that dog, we found um, a spirit of a Native American woman, and she had a dog with her also, like her dog. So there's a lot of one of the things the homeowner said is that the dogs will get They're a little mm -hmm, will get agitated. Yeah, and these puppies are I don't know six months old. Yeah, they're not tiny tiny puppies, but they're still puppies. Yeah, but you know they, I, f I, f I was going to say, but they they see and like play with invisible things out there, and later we determined that there was the dog spirits back there. Yeah, and the I Indian. felt one of the dogs back there. I don't know which if I felt the 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 pet that that died or the the native american girls but i did feel at least one dog in that yard and it, w it was a happy dog yeah i think my personal opinion because i didn't check and ask but i i think we felt the one that died recently because it was a very powerful um, i think you're right I, I yeah could, i could feel the other one but um it was very weak simply because it was an older and i'm taught when i'm talking i'm talking like 16 1700s older yeah. Kind of yeah, older. I didn't. I don't. I didn't pick up on that at all. That 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 Native American was kind of attached with the land from way back. Yeah. Well, that was her burial site, right? I th she was. A I think it was a burial site. I mean, Charles said it was through the dowsing rods, and it just had a different feel than just uh -huh. oh, I'm a spirit that just happened to end up here. It, it had a more rooted, grounded feel to it. Well, Charles took you right to the spot that you felt it earlier, too. Yeah, because remember when we first walked out there, we were just using our feels, and we both yeah. kind of felt it the same place. Right and in then, front of the outhouse there. Yeah, they had like a decorative outhouse. Decorative, yeah. And then, He made sure we knew that. <laughs> yes, he's like, it's just a decoration. It's well, like, you should have oh. told me sooner. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but then we, had, we took the dowsing rods out there later, and I told Charles, I said, cross these when we get to you know, where the remains are. And he crossed just right about where we started. To I mean, it. literally within like 18 inches. Yep. Literally. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so for me, um, so what, what we did is we closed the portal. Uh, we, we did a hard cleanse of the home. You know, sometimes we'll just do the room where the type three is, but just with everything going on, we did the entire house. Yeah. Um, it fortunately it was a small house. Yeah. 
And we've done huge houses before. It just takes a little longer. Oh, oh, you remember before we cleansed it, we were standing in the living room kind of talking things over. And I was just holding the, the video camera and oh, yeah. something pushed my arm. And I, I realized today the camera was running. I wasn't really aiming it at anything. So, you, you know, but you can hear our reactions to it. Right. Well, the, the funny thing is, is, um, I mean, I wasn't staring at you, watching you, you know, creepily, but I, I was putting stuff away and uh, Chad was walking into the room. So I kind of looked up to see if we were going to powwow or anything. Right. And I saw your arm kind of jerk. And then I think you said, I think I just got shoved. And then you asked Chad if he'd. Right, he touched you or anything? He's like, no, and I was like, no, I, I watched. Yeah, him. I could, I could see he was too far away, but I just, I had to ask because I knew he was behind me coming in. Yeah. Right, and the way you had moved your arm, I remember thinking, oh, I wonder if he saw something interesting that he wanted to hurry and catch because it was, it wasn't just a, oh, I'm moving. It was kind of a a, a, a jerk of a, a little bit, a, a little bit of yeah, a push, a little bit of a jerk. Yeah, I think I turned my head to see if the clients were in the front yard at that moment. Uh huh. And I had my camera, you know, the hand was kind of down a little bit. But yeah, no, it fell. It was right, right in the middle of my forearm. Like a hand actually was placed on my arm and pushed it. Yeah, and That's it was exactly what it felt like. And it didn't move, you know, like if you're looking and you turn and your whole body kind of turns kind of a thing or, you know, part of your body. It, it wasn't, it wasn't um, a consistent. A full body movement. It, it wasn't was, consistent. It was the arm like someone pushed it. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. consistent with the rest of your rest of your motion. It, yeah, it did. That's exactly what it felt like. Uh, somebody actually physically pushing it. I felt the pressure on my arm. There was a little girl in the home. We crossed her over. Um, there was the two type threes. We cleansed them. The Native American woman, it wasn't causing any trouble, so we let her stay. There was an attic, and I just had a feeling that the cleansing didn't take care of the attic, and I wasn't quite sure how to go about cleansing it. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to call Newman. Um, Let's give Newman a plug. Yep. So Newman is amazing. If you need some readings, um, he and his wife both do readings. Uh, to my knowledge, they sell crystals. I know they had a storefront that they've had to change. Um, fantastic. If you need a reading, a clearing, call them. Oh, o- over the phone, miles away, he nailed this place. Oh, nailed it. So um, you can find him... Um, there's two mediums that their names are very, very similar. We will, we will add it in. Okay. And we'll put it, we'll put a slide on the YouTube also. Yeah. So we'll have a slide up on YouTube so you can see it too. Um, so I thought, you know what? And I usually would put coffin nails to protect the, the entire the yard, of the yard, but I didn't have any with me and Rogue was not able to be there last night. She had a, another thing come up. So um, I thought I'm going to call Newman and just have him make sure that, you know, the attic is clear and put a protection on the entire yard. So I called him and he answers the phone. And this is exactly what I told him. I said, hey, Newman, how are you? I'm doing good. I said, we're at a home. Um, We just cleansed out two type threes. And um, I really need you to you know, if you could put a protection over their yard so that the type three stay out of their yard. That is all I told him. So he, you know, paused for a minute because he does this remotely. And he says, oh, there's actually another type three up in the attic. And I was like, I knew it. Something just said, you got to take care of the attic. Right above those mirrors too. Right above where the mirrors were. So he, he got rid of that one. Um, He put a protection over the whole you know, the whole yard. And then he said, there's a mirror. And and you might say, oh yeah, every house has a mirror. That's dumb. But he goes, there's a mirror, um, but it's been taken down. And I I thought the homeowner's wife was going to (laughs) pass out. (laughs) Because she's listening to the whole thing. You know, the the phone is on. I've got it on speaker. And I thought, I mean, her jaw couldn't have dropped any lower. And so, you know, he's, he, he cleansed the mirror. He took care of the mirror. Well, um, each of these people, these people were fabulous, but each of these people had had some, some, some hardships in life. We all do, right? They uh, vocalized a few things that they were dealing with. And um, it's interesting because when I call Newman, um, you know, to come in and, and kind of make sure that we've gotten rid of everything, if there's a question, 
Um, you know, he'll talk to the homeowners and he'll have them, you know, say a sentence or two. and To help um, clear and break some connections, yeah, things like that. You know, and he'll talk to them for, you know, two or three minutes and then we'll call it good. I did not tell Newman about these um, hardships that they had uh, Been confided, going through. confided in us. And he talked to them for, what, a good 10, 15 minutes mm-hmm. about these things that they were dealing with. And my jaw fell open. I mean, I, I know they're fantastic, or I wouldn't call them, but he pegged them, I mean, between them and the mirror and the type 3 in the attic. You know, I wanted to look out the window and see if he was standing outside. I was like, wow, this is phenomenal. So, anyway, it was a it was a good investigation. I mean, those, you could tell they were, you know, their mood was so much lighter, and they were actually happy. Oh, yeah. When we left. Well, there was one point when he was um, having them say some things to break some old connections and stuff. Um, I'm just standing there holding the phone and they were getting, you know, emotional. And I could feel just this energy around them as though they had 25 to 30 loved ones standing around them. It was it was amazing. I definitely put this. I mean, we've never done a bad investigation, but I put this in my top five. And the only reason I don't put it higher is because there might be one or two I forget about. But definitely in my top five favorite investigations that we did. And oh, we've done cool. a lot of investigations. One thing that keeps, you know, I keep remembering little details from last night. And I remember, uh, you know, we uh, at the crossing over. Like you're explaining to this little girl, don't be scared. You know, it's it's there could be something nice over there. Just and all of a sudden you go, oh, she's gone. She like I, darted through. Usually, yeah, yeah. Usually I have to coax them. I mean, as soon as we, like, as soon as yeah. we drew her attention to the light, I'm, she was gone. Like, I was like, like, nice talking to you. <laughs> like, okay. Well, that was a great residential investigation. One of one of my favorites. Yeah, it was it was awesome. Check out our shop at advancedparanormal.com. Check out our social media on YouTube, TikTok, uh, all of those places. We we really appreciate your patronage uh, there. Patreon also. Terrific. All right. Well, tonight I just want to talk briefly about uh, uh, EVP recorders. And I realize it's been about three months since I sat down an investigation and, and tried to... Uh, tried to get some EVPs and uh, I've been asked, you know, what, what do we use? Well, amazingly, almost anything works from, you know, a $25 uh, inexpensive uh, voice recorder up to, you know, we use our, our, our probably most expensive one is a, is a Zoom H4N Pro, which is made like for podcasting, you know, live music or recording uh, remote sessions and it's just a pro quality, but it's really complicated to use and, but it does produce great results. But, um, for what we use it for, not that much better than, than, you know, a $30 one. One of my favorites though, Sony makes a line, uh, uh, and they've been doing it for years of an inexpensive, uh, EVP recorder and they go anywhere from 40 to $70. And they even have a, uh, a retractable USB jack that just folds in and out, plugs right into your computer, and you can download the files directly. So um, I'd say just look over Amazon or eBay. You don't have to spend three or four hundred dollars on a on a voice recorder. I mean, uh, thirty to a hundred will get you something that'll last you, you know, for the rest of your life as far as EVPs go. Yeah, you know, but, most people. Well, I shouldn't say most people. Most of the times when people send us EVPs that they've caught on our public event, it's one that they've gotten with their phone recorder. On the phone, sure, yeah. Yeah, and they've been fantastic. And I even, even most of my EVPs I've caught over the audio track of a video. You know, I've caught a few on a dedicated voice recorder, but it's most always something else. So Awesome. We've even um, had, in the past, we've had uh, listeners call in and say, hey, Go listen to this podcast at this time. We think there's an EVP. We've actually had Emmett chat with that my Emmett, my my spirit Emmett that lives in my home, um, has actually chatted on the podcast a couple of times. That's cool. 
That's cool. And I'm still trying to, I, you know, I've been experimenting with inexpensive hearing aids, trying to use that as a direct pickup for EVPs so far without a lot of success, just because they pick up everything, you know, mm -hmm. they're not just discriminating at all, but, uh, there's a lot you can do in that department without a lot of money. Oh, cool. I never thought of that. Yep. So that's about it for this week. Before the junk drawer, uh, I want to remind you all about Supernatural Hour swag at advancedparanormal.com, which you all want to visit for all of your supernatural and paranormal needs. And that's just a fun website. We've got we've got a lot of stuff on there. Peruse around. T-shirts, sweatshirts, mugs, all sorts of things. Notebooks. Okay. I go on there every once in a while and see new things, and I'm surprised, and it's, it is. It's totally cool. So the junk drawer is brought to you by the Hub Theater. Did I say that right? That's what you've got here on your notes. Because sometimes I call it the yep. wrong name. So if you're listening, Hub Theater, uh, we love you. I think it's the town. I love the Hub Theater. Yeah, we will definitely go back there. It's a fantastic venue. So um, the junk drawer today is on a an event um, that I've watched on YouTube a couple times. I have absolutely no notes about it, so this could be very interesting. Super excited. It's called the Phantom... Fortress. Fortress. I had to ask Chad that like five times today. It's called the Phantom Fortress. It's um, an airplane. Chad might be able to tell us what kind. It's a B-17G. It's a bomber from World War II. Maybe I should have you do the junk drawer. <laughs> I'll do the junk drawer. <laughs> We're going to pass the junk drawer off to Chad so that you get a cohesive story. But I want to hear any story about a B-17. Let's bring it on. Okay, here we go. Okay, so um, in 1944, there was an airfield in Belgium, and after a bombing run that was coming in, a B-17 was flying into this, it was a British Air Force base that was in Belgium. And the plane came in and it was, they could tell there was something wrong. It, they, it seemed shot up. There seemed like there just wasn't things that were, were working on it right. And it landed and one of the landing gear um, collapsed and it fell and it stopped one of the engines. And it wasn't the kind of plane that normally lands at this Air Force base. The plane was originally flown out from an Army air base in England, um, but it was landing because it was in distress in Belgium at an English air base. When they got there, it kind of crash landed. I mean, it landed pretty well. Um, down on one side, one of the engine the propellers were stopped and, you know, it had, had kind of done. And after about 15 minutes, nobody came out of the plane. And after they waited another five or six minutes, and one of the, I think it was a major, went and found a way to get into the plane. When he got in on the plane, there was no one on board. There were 12 parachutes. Oh, wow. 12 parachutes left in the plane. The plane had landed. The bombs had been dropped. Um, but there was nobody on board the plane. And the plane literally landed itself. Now, the question is, how did the landing gear get lo get get lowered. There's lots of weird things about this, but this plane flew for many, many miles and landed at an air base in, in Belgium, um, an allied air base. Wow. Um, ghost crew. So they, they went back and they were able to, um, talk with the crew. They were able to find the crew and they had bailed out, um, that they had, taken some some flack in, in the bomb bay area um the bombs hadn't gone off they were able to get rid of their stuff they did that but it caused oh. some damage go ahead they um in order to try to to help their situation the pilot had them jettison everything off the plane to try to make it lighter they threw everything to out. lighten yeah to lighten the the plane so that they could do it um they had had an engine go out um and so they were doing everything to do that. And they actually, um, a second engine was sputtering and going out. And as they had bailed out, um, that other engine went out. So the, the crew, there were 10, there was a 10 man crew and the crew said that, and they, they all were recovered. The crew said that when they bailed out, the, um, the second engine had gone out, that there were two engines and they had nothing, you know, there was nothing they could do. So they set it on automatic pilot 
and the automatic pilot of the of the day was not anything like ours or today. It basically kept the plane in level flight. So the pilot had put it on automatic pilot, and the automatic pilots of the day just basically kept the plane flying level, um, so that you know the pilots could you know converse back and forth when there weren't things going on, and it, it was basically so. You know, he wanted the plane level so everybody could get out. And all 10 crewmen got out, and all 10 crewmen were there. Two of the engines were out. Um, when the plane was landing in Belgium, at the airfield in Belgium. Um, at an airfield. At an airfield. Not at, just randomly in the forest. At an airfield on a landing strip. Yeah. The landing it, gear were down. Wow. And they hadn't put the landing. You, you don't you don't fly your plane with the landing gear down. <laughs> right. Um, so the landing well, and, and amazing it stayed trimmed and, and level and actually got to the airfield at all yeah, even and, if it and part came of that was the belly it's yeah, a miracle part of that was the uh, you know that he did put it on autopilot which would keep it flying level but you would think that after you know the it's going to fly level until you run out of fuel and then it's just going to land wherever and it's not going to land pretty because there's no landing gear but this right. airplane just is like oh hey Let's just put on our landing gear and land on a runway at an airport. Yeah, no, that just doesn't happen. Right, best. and think about it from, let's say, from Provo to Salt Lake, you're in a plane, and you just put it in the direction where you think the Salt Lake International Airport is, and you bail out. <laughs> you hope it lands. You know, what yeah, are the chances of even being on the right line to get to the airport? Well, and as right. you know, because I've heard this Okay, here we go. In the in the LDS Church, there is one of our our higher up leaders um, was a pilot for years and years, and so when he gives talks, there's usually an airplane analogy in it, right? And okay. he tells a story off. Well, there's one of the story he told was if you're an airplane on a heading, right? And you're heading in a direction. If you veer off of that heading, just even the tiniest little degree, it starts out little, but the further, you know, the longer you fly, the bigger that distance gets, right? Right. Right. So for, yeah. So if you, if they set this airplane and it's just not on the absolute perfect trajectory, it's going to be way far away. You know, hey, I think the airport's roughly this direction. Well, roughly this direction in an airplane, the longer you fly, the further off and whatever offness you have, it's going to get. So that's very interesting. And so to have the airplane come in, you know, and they, they could tell it was there. They they brought in, you know, the the crash crew and some things in case, and just there was nobody on board. One well, of the other interesting things, like I said, the landing gear was down. It landed at the air, you know, the air base in Belgium. There were 12 parachutes on board that hadn't been used. And the coats. And, and the coats and the airmen's coats, their heavy jackets. But they had, you know, but when but they, they had bailed out and they were all fine. Yeah, they had bailed out, and then remember they had said that in order, you know, when they were trying to stay on the airplane and and save it and be able to land it themselves, they threw everything off that they didn't need that was unneeded. So very weird. Wow. Um, go out to YouTube and look up uh, the Phantom Fortress. Very interesting YouTube. It's what seven or eight minutes long. Yeah, it's not very long. And if if your life depends on remembering the name Phantom Fortress. And it's my job to remember that. You're going to die. I'll remember that. That's a cool story. <laughs> Very cool. The YouTube video I recommend. It was one of those. I was just flipping through videos and it's like, wow, this is weird. I don't know if it's paranormal or coincidental or what, but I there's a lot of paranormal there. I think it's paranormal because it's just too coincidental. There's too many weird things. It's... It sounds like a Steven Spielberg movie. Right? Yeah. It, you know? It's almost, was there some kind of a time slip with something else It could almost be a Stephen King life? movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stephen King. <laughs> a so, creepier vibes going on somewhere in that one, but you know. So that's the Phantom Fortress. It wasn't named that. That's what the media gave it the name afterwards. It didn't have, a lot of the B-17s had art and names that they had would give them, you know, you, like the Enola Gay with the... The pinup girls. Yeah. The pinup or pinup girls on it with Betty Grable. This one didn't have any of that kind of um, nose art or anything else, but they did check, you know, the serial number and they knew where it was and what what bomber squadron it had gone out with, and they were able to find the the crew. So very interesting, wacky, weird story. Cool story. 
Wow, thank you. Wonderful. I love that. I'm going to look that up. Alrighty. Well, I think that is it for us tonight. Thank you for being here with us, and we will talk to you again next podcast. Stay spooky, my haunty friends. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey, have a good night, everyone. You've been listening to The Supernatural Hour at AdvancedParanormal.com. The Supernatural Hour is part of the Radio Ronin Network, found at RadioRonin.com. Copyright by Advanced Paranormal Services.